Hello there, Cecilia Sabaja with Travel Oregon here. I'm the database information specialist, and today I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the Oregon Tourism Information System, also known as OTIS. OTIS is a collaborative platform that Travel Oregon and industry partners like regional and local destination management organizations use to maintain and share our tourism assets or points of interest. OTIS unifies the efforts of our tourism industry and it helps us to streamline listing management and communication. The short of it is, OTIS is the database that contains the listings that appear on Travel Oregon's website, as well as a number of industry partner websites who have integrated with OTIS. OTIS user accounts are open to representatives with regional and local DMOs, and we also have content partnerships with statewide organizations, including Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association, Oregon State Marine Board, and Oregon Wine Board. So let's get started. You can use OTIS in any web browser. For today's session, I'm using Chrome. And when I first log in, I get to this dashboard that has a number of different widgets. Uh, you can click into these helper bubbles at any time to, to get more information about the widget and these helper snippets appear throughout Otis. So you can click into these anytime you need more information to understand uh, what you need to do at any place. So our first widget here, just example, current listings by status, shows you Otis types along the left-hand side here. And we have over 60 different types in Otis. These range from events, to hotels, to campgrounds, even mountains. And across the top, we have different statuses. Again, you can find the definitions in this helper section here, but an example would be an approved listing is approved to appear on TravelOregon.com as well as integrated partner websites. We have a toolbar across the top in Otis, and this toolbar persists no matter where you are in the platform. You have a keyword search. Keep in mind, less is more with searching. And because Otis is a collaborative platform with multiple users, different users may name a listing slightly differently. For example, if you have and in the name of a restaurant, a user may spell that out or potentially use an ampersand. To the right of our search box, this little plus sign is where you go to create a new listing once you've checked that it's not already in Otis. You can also click in to your messages. In Otis, you can message any other Otis user. Your profile is accessible up here. Uh, your profile is where you'd find your contact information. You can change your password if you need to. Also upload a profile image and you can log out. I spend a lot of time navigating in Otis on this left menu here, specifically in the listing section. Now, when I initially click into this listing section, I'm going to get results of all listings that I have view, edit, or delete access to. And for today's session, I set myself up as a user with the local DMO, Albany Visitors Association. So I have view access to any listing within my tourism region of the Willamette Valley, and I have edit and delete permissions to any listings that are located in my jurisdiction, which is Lynn County and also the city of Amity. So you can see in this initial listing view, some listings are grayed out. These are the listings I can view, but not change. And then bold listings, I can click into and edit or delete if I have to. Uh, within this section, you can see that you can preview images that are attached to listings. You can view the listing information with this little icon here. You can message the listing owner if you would have need to do that. 
You can also copy listings in Otis, and this comes in really handy uh, if you have a business with multiple locations. Uh, another great example of when you can use this is if you are copying events, for example, find an event from last year, copy the listing, all of the existing information comes in and you only need to make the changes to what has changed, like the listing or the event date, for example. Now on listings that you do have edit permissions to, you can click directly into the listing form from the name of the listing, or you can click on this pencil icon. So I'm gonna show you um, how you can filter and really drill down to see the listing data for your area. Um, and then uh, we'll hop into a listing form and I'll show you how that listing information translates to different websites. So say within my area, I only want to take a look at listings for a specific city. I can filter by city. I can filter by multiple cities if I want. I can filter by different types. Uh, you can also get a view specific to a collection. For example, uh, if I select the eat and drink collection, the results returned will include any listing where I could do that. Restaurants, uh, coffee shops, breweries, cideries, wine and wineries, etc. So I'm going to take us to events. And this will show me um, all events that are happening in Albany. And then I will click into a listing and show you around the actual listing form. Okay, you can see I have 35 events and let's click into the Lynn County Fair. Okay, so within our listing form, the first section of our listing form is contact information, which not only includes contact information like phone number and email address where a visitor can get more information or potentially book an experience. Um, it also includes your listing name, a brief description, and what we're looking to get from a description is essentially a preview of what a visitor can expect. It doesn't need to be a full copy and paste of six paragraphs from a press release. Uh, one paragraph is great. In some instances, it might just be a couple of sentences. Um, so within the events type, we do have a couple unique attribute fields. And these include this event subtype, if you will, which tells me specifically what kind of event this is. And since this is a county fair, there's a lot of different things going on at a county fair. So we've selected fairs and festivals, there's exhibits, uh, culture and heritage events, and visual and performing arts. There's concerts there, live music. Uh, we enter contact information if you have it, email address. For events specifically, you have a start date and an end date field. That's another unique attribute. Uh, you wouldn't find these fields in a restaurant listing, for example. But within a restaurant listing, you'll find a field for cuisine type that you don't find in an event. Uh, we also want to give the potential visitor uh, channels by which to get more information, which I would say the most popular one of those is a website. Uh, we can also, in addition to website, add social media links, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Flickr. Uh, we've got them all and you can add them separately here. We also further describe a listing with location information. In many cases, that's going to be a street address. In some instances, there may not be an address, um, but we can still get that location into Otis um, if we don't have a primary street address. We can enter in latitude and longitude coordinates, um, and the easiest place to get these 
is typically from a Google Maps listing. So in this case, we do have a primary address, so we'd use that. And that is the field that Otis uses to geolocate where this listing is, and in this case, where this event is happening. We can further describe listings by using activities. Activities answer the question, what is this listing good for? And within activities, you're gonna find things like family fun, which is family friendly, uh, pet friendly, um, and a lot of activities ending in ING. If this was a parks listing, for example, that had hiking and biking trails, I could select biking and also hiking as activities. So in this example with the fair, we have it's ADA accessible. There's educational activities, like we said before, there's exhibits, learning opportunities, and of course, family fun. Also in Otis, you can relate listings to each other and events are perfect for this. Uh, if you have an event that is happening at a, a di different venue, for example, um, a, an event at a winery, you could have your event listing and associate it with that winery. And you just do a keyword search, find your listing. And this is just an example that I won't save. And when you see that listing, just select it with this plus sign. A listing uh, with a photo appears more complete. Um, if you do have a photo, please upload it. Um, once you have uploaded a photo to Otis, it is in the photo library. And if you needed that image for a future listing, you could just find it in Otis again. You don't need to upload it again. There's an internal only section in our listing form. And this is where you'll find things like uh, you can save your listing to a different status. For example, if you're not quite ready to submit your listing, you could save it as a working draft. The default status is pending approval. And that is the status that Travel Oregon sees to know that that listing needs review. Uh, this internal only section is also where you'll find information like the listing owner. Uh, you can also see if uh, a listing is affiliated with a Travel Oregon program. You might see a global category here. For example, they're a member of the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association um, or the example of a guide or outfitter that's licensed by the Oregon State Marine Board. You would find that information here. This is also where you can leave a note for any other user to see. I use notes quite often since I make updates to listings that different people have access to. So for example, if I'm making an update per the business's request, I will note that here. And also once a listing has been created in Otis, it has a history. So you can see that history here in the listing form. When it was created, and then any other edits that have been made since. Now, since I clicked into this listing form and I didn't make changes, I want to hit this back button. If I did make changes, I would hit the submit button. Additionally, if I was in my listing form and I realized this listing is no longer available, the business is permanently closed, I can delete it within the listing form as well. So that is what the Lynn County Fair listing looked like in Otis. Here is how that listing translates to Travel Oregon's website. And we can also see it on Willamette Valley Visitors Association website right here. So that's the example of the reach uh, within Otis. Another great example of integrated websites within the Willamette Valley region are um, Taste Newberg, Visit McMinnville and Willamette Valley Visitor Association. So any listings that Visit McMinnville has a notice appear on their website, Taste Newberg sites and uh, Willamette Valley Visitor Association.
So other sections within this left-hand menu here, I mentioned before the Otis Photo Library. You can click in if you needed to search photo. Um, if you are in Otis and realize we're missing a lot of listings in your area, we also have a bulk upload feature available. And with bulk upload, you compile your listing data into your own spreadsheet and we can bulk uplo upload those listings directly into Otis. And you can also click into your message center here. So Otis can do a lot. Uh, we've barely scratched the surface today, but if you have any questions and want to learn more or to see if you qualify for an Otis user account, you can always reach me at Otis, O-T-I-S, at TravelOregon.com. Thanks for your time.